Good afternoon and welcome to Blown Wide Open. Today we're taking a look at an instrument which I don't think it's unfair to say didn't really set the market alight, the Korg Drumlog. It's uh, a hybrid drum machine, part analog, part digital. It's got some interesting kind of a user oscillator and user effects functionality. So yeah, let's dive in. So I think most of us know the sort of basics about the drum log. There's a number of analog voices, really, really beefy bass drum. When I first heard that through headphones, um, synth fest was like, wow, this is serious business. There's a kind of standard analog snare. Korg obviously have a, a big, big history with drum machines. They're not as celebrated as Roland, I find, but just some great, great classic vintage analog designs. A low and a high tom, nothing groundbreaking yet. <laughs> but then we get to the digital section. There's a number of closed and open hi-hat sounds. And there's a good kind of tuning range on them, you know? For these digital samples, you've got things like bit rate reduction. You know by now I like a bit of crust. <laughs> Cool, that one's nasty. Rim shot. A clap for your sexual healing needs. And then we get to the interesting stuff, so samples. Now there is quite a limited volume decay on the samples, but I'll show you a bit of kind of sample munging that the machine can do the opportunity to scan through the start and end of the sample. So that leads with the motion recording to some pretty cool sample munging kind of effects. And with motion recording on, you can see <laughs> that it's stepping through the sample in bizarre ways. I don't know, drop some beats or something. And I've got a little user synth in the background, which I'm going to tell you all about later, because that's where the main weird stuff is in this instrument. Let's change this sample and see what kind of uh, effect you get. So that's pretty cool, right? But that is pretty basic stuff that's been in the Korg drum log from the start. A lot of the initial reviews of the unit went into these kind of features. So I'm gonna 
start to get a bit more weird now. <laughs> the first weird thing I need to tell you is that any instrument which has customizable open source user effects or algorithms runs the risk of sometimes those algorithms overloading the device. So in this pattern, obviously I've got all the sample skipping, plus I've got this user synth. I've also got a user delay going. And because the system is so taxed, if I turn on the reverb as well, this little drum log loses its mind. Let's try it. The next sort of weird thing is in the delay effects. So there's multiple delay programs like mono stereo tape and BPM versions, but Delay Lab is the user one. Yes, there's an LFO in Delay Lab. See how fast this LFO goes. No, it's getting past a sort of modulation delay and into 
an effect of its own, an audio rate effect of its own. Hundred and thirty four. It goes up to four hundred and thirty eight point one hertz. Ring mod kind of tones. Turn the width up more. Super nasty. So there's a couple of weird things right off the bat there, <laughs> but it's going to be in the user synth. Oh where we're going to find our absolutely weirdest, weirdest and most wonderful stuff. I'm just going to quickly show you Nano, which is a nice little sweet mono synth. I will say one thing about Nano though, it's got really nice ring mod implementation. There's a few different waves you can ring mod. That sounds super lovely and there's a, a low pass filter with resonance. For some uh, sing song harmonics. But the main event today is undoubtedly FM64. Now FM64 is written by this genius guy called Oleg and it's actually a Dexed port <laughs> for voice poly for the Korg drum log. Now that sounds, you know, quite entertaining, quite cool. But some of the unique features in it, oh my goodness, they get really, really odd and really, really, really cool. So, now it works in a kind of macro offset way. So in some ways it's not the most editable FM voice. You basically have to make your patches beforehand in Dexed, use his website to convert them to WAV files, and it loads that sample data in to the machine. I guess it works like a ZX Spectrum, loading in audio as data. And essentially, yes, it will load Dexed presets. It will strip out the LFO and the pitch envelope. They're not implemented yet. You can essentially add or detract from the envelope times, like a macro envelope. You 
can sequence in an FM part into your patch. It is monophonic, but it will continue the release of the previous notes. Now, not only can you tweak the kind of macro envelopes, you can essentially change the algorithm, <laughs> which is a bit potluck, you know. There's algorithms from the OP6, the Psi 77 as well. It's, it's wild. <laughs> feedback path and feedback offset is a thing. Now, this is the most exciting thing for me, I feel. I had a lot of fun making some very basic two-op patches in Dexed to show off this next feature because you can choose different waveforms. It loads in with a sine wave to begin with and uses that for all the patches, Brill, but you can load your own waveforms in. Oleg, he gave us some waveforms. He decided to give us some from the, I think it's the OP6, the DX11, you know, those weird double signs and stuff. A lot of FM flexibility just right there, but it goes deeper, man, it goes much deeper. I added a few of my own. Here are some DWGS ones from the Microcorg. I find it fitting as a Korg instrument to put some DWGS waveforms in. You can turn down the modulators a bit if you want to have something a little less in your face. I think that sounds super cool.
bit of a dark, almost PPG choir. So, with some trickery, I noticed that you could use any waveform that's as long as a power of two number. So that meant I could have waves that are, I think it's 32,768 samples long, which means we're into sample territory, baby. We're into PCM waveforms being able to be used like carriers and modulators. So this should be a string sample which gets modulated by, I think, a sine or a triangle. Absolute wild attack of the bees sound. So I love these kind of tones, you know. Let's try it with a pre-filtered string sample. This one Noise spectra sounds very didgeridoo-ish. Same spectra, pre-filtered. Listen to that intensity. just added a bit of feedback 
operator one to operator one. This is a marimba loop. I sometimes sequence a mixture of samples and different waveforms, you know, to get really cool FM wave sequences. This is like really kind of pushing things, I think.
So thanks for taking a little dive into the Korg drum log with me. Let's see what synth we feature next time on Blown Wide Open. See you later. And now on Central, some bonus sounds captured when the camera was off.